you work your whole life yeah. and then it's like have I actually done the Olympics? Like, I, yeah. I didn't really understand that I had and over the years because I've been known for just chucking crazy stuff <laughs> throughout my whole career. I was like, this is surreal. Like, I don't even know if this is actually happening. I'm like, when am I going to wake up kind of thing? So walking away while a champion was just icing on the cake, really. I, I know I, I gained a lot as a person and as an athlete out there. Yeah. Um, I just, I'm, I'm hungry for yeah. more. Uh, <laughs> Welcome back to the Jacuzzi Performance Podcast. I'm Ed Baxter, and today we're joined by world champion, Olympic finalist, Joe Fraser. How are you doing, Joe? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. No worries. So you're just back from the Tokyo Olympics, your first ever games. Kind of describe that experience for us. How was it? <sighs> <laughs> just that. Yeah, to be honest, like, you know, you've worked your whole life for those essentially 10 days. Yeah. So it's kind of surreal trying to you know soak up every single moment while i was there yeah um but I, I i did my best and like i know i know i've given my all yeah although i didn't walk away with the results that i'd liked yeah i know that there's more in the tank for next time so i'm just motivated looking forward to the future and just pushing on so you're saying there you know you've worked your whole <laughs> life for it you feel like you've built up to that moment how is it for you does that you know you said you didn't quite get the results you wanted does that a big push to to be like, right, I want to be straight back in the gym? Or is it like, right, I need to take a bit of time now, relax, and then go again? See, at first I was like, I need to be back in the gym. Yeah. And then once I actually came home, I obviously knew I needed shoulder, shoulder surgery. And yeah. it gave me a bit of time to reflect more because I, I'm usually one of those guys that's go, 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 go. Yeah. But that gave me a chance to take a step back. And I think it, it's probably very much needed, especially after such a long cycle. Mm. So, yeah, I'm motivated. Yeah. And Ready seeing the guys training training for world championships at the moment, it's very inspiring. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm definitely motivated and want to give my all for the next cycle. So you said there, you know, it's a very long cycle, you know, five years instead of the usual four year cycle. At the start of that five what you thought would be a four year cycle, was that the goal? Did you want to be in Tokyo? Did you know you'd be in Tokyo? Oh, at the beginning of the cycle, yeah. I'm sure my mindset was very different to, than towards the end of it. Yeah. I always had the dream of wanting to go to Tokyo, okay. but my vision on what I could achieve out there probably changed as the cycle went on. Okay. Um, my coach always had the vision that I could do great things, mm -hmm. and that's why at the beginning of the cycle, he always makes us write out routines that he wants us to compete by the end of the cycle. Yeah. Kind of showing that you know we've got vision of where we want that routine to go on each each event. Yeah. Um, so the routine that I actually won the world championship with. Yeah. was the routine we actually writ out oh, really? three years no prior. That's crazy. So yeah, so that, that kind of showed to me like, he's got the vision, I've got the vision, we need to just keep going with that kind of, yeah. that driving force. Does a lot of athletes who are in like a time-based sport would write down like a time, be like, mm. I want to hit this time by, you know, the next Olympic cycle or whatever. So for you, do you say there, you write down a routine and then it's you doing that to your, the best of your ability and whatever happens, happens, is that how it goes? Yeah, so, we were going for the most difficulty, yeah. but at the same time working on the execution. So it's kind of a, in gymnastics, is a balance of yeah, getting the, crazy the right, yeah, the, <laughs> the crazy stuff yeah. with the beautifully clean stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I've had to work on over the years, because I've been known for just chucking crazy stuff <laughs> throughout my whole career. So, you know, getting them things consistent and, and performing them on, on Olympic and world stages was, was the challenge. Yeah. So you know, we've just talked about, you know, your first games experience, not quite getting the results you wanted. You've had a lot of experience at international level and stuff like that. What's the difference between, obviously it was a very different Olympics this year with yeah. COVID and everything. What's the, what's the difference between that games compared to, you know, world championships, the Europeans? It's crazy. Cause you know, like you, you, when you're there, you know, it's the Olympic games and you know, it's like this event that you've worked your whole life for. Yeah. But at the same time, you're seeing the same faces you've seen yeah. throughout the whole cycle, and these people that you've competed against. Like, in terms of that, not not much changes. Yeah. But when you're looking around the arena and you're seeing five rings everywhere, yeah, you start to believe like, oh, my days are at the Olympic Games because obviously we didn't have a crowd. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of what made it real to me that we was at the Olympic Games. Yeah, seeing so the rings. Yeah. So what was it? What was it? You know, you you walked into the arena. You know, like you said there, you can feel the buzz. You're seeing the rings everywhere. How do you keep that? 
you know, just a normal gymnastics room that you're just going to do your thing in. How do you how do you do that, like, mentally, I guess? Um, f for me, like, I, I had my teammates and coach there, so I just treat it like a training session. Yeah. That's how I always have done. And I, I always, yeah, I've try, tried to enjoy it because, you know, you, like I say, you work so many years for those moments. If you don't actually enjoy them, it's yeah. kind of, you're wasting, wasting those, th that time you have. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely what I tried to do out there. So you're saying you didn't come away with the results you wanted, yeah. but you were still the first male to ever make a final in a parallel <laughs> bars discipline. That must still feel pretty special, right? Yeah, no, definitely. Like, I, I know I, I gained a lot as a person and as an athlete out there. Yeah. Um, I just, I'm, I'm hungry for yeah. more. Uh, Do you take that time to be like, that's pretty special what I've done, or are you just, is it just another thing that you've done and it's like, right, now, on to the next thing? Or can you like appreciate what, what you've kind of achieved? I think it took for other people to give it, like say it to me, okay, for yeah. me to actually process it. Because at first, all I was thinking about was, I didn't get what exactly what I wanted. I, I didn't achieve as much as I wanted. and yeah. I didn't just want it for myself, I wanted it for my, my friends, my family, my teammates, my coach who had always been there for me and pushed me along that journey. Yeah. That so I, I kind of wanted results for them rather than, not necessarily yeah, for myself, yeah. but like for them as well. Yeah, what, um, what result did you want? I'd have loved to walk away with an Olympic medal or, you know, an Olympic Total. champion or something like that, yeah. you know, like, like I say, you work, I've worked 17 years. Yeah. Um, doing somersaults for <laughs> for a living, so I'd I'd have loved to have walked away with a medal, and I'm sure my coach would say the same thing. Um, but you know, we move on, and we know that we know that it's doable. We just got to develop and move forwards now. Yeah. So you finished fourth in the team event. Yeah. For people that are watching who you know see gymnastics as yourself in the parallel bars or someone on the floor, what is a gymnastics team event or the specific team event you did? Okay, so a team event at the Olympics, it consisted of four members yep. from each country. And on every event, so the six events, we have three people go on each event. Yep. And every single one of those routines counts to the team score. So if somebody falls off or somebody makes a mistake or somebody Sorry, gets team. injured halfway through the comp, yeah. the team score will be affected by that. So it's really pressurised. Um, you can't afford for errors, really. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a nerve-wracking one. And for me, it's my most nerve-wracking competition. Oh, really? Do you feel a lot more pressure there than in your individual? 100%, yeah. because I, I feel like I'm re I really am doing it for the other guys then. Yeah. Um, when I'm in individual events, if I make a mistake, that's, that's for me, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I definitely feel a lot more pressure in team events. How did, how did you guys feel walking away with a fourth? You know, like I said, your first games to walk away, you know, fourth in an Olympics is pretty special but then like you mm. said you're very hungry you want yeah. you want that success how was that some people would look at fourth at the Olympic Games and be like oh my god wow that's incredible mm -hmm. but we are just hungry and want more we'd love to have walked away third four, second first and obviously we just weren't good enough on the day when we, we worked out that we would have needed a lot on each routine more oh really in the grand scheme of things to actually get into the medals yeah so that just makes us all know that we, we need to push harder. We need, we need to have that vision and drive for the future if we truly want to make that team success. And I, I believe that we can do it. Yeah. And I'm sure the other guys do. So that's why we're all knuckling down now and giving our all. Yeah, that's cool. So you said you felt a lot more pressure in, in like a team event compared to an individual, because obviously you, you know, it's, it's everyone's medal or you know, title at risk essentially. In, like I said before, a time-based sport, you know, you miss a stride in running, you miss a stroke in swimming, you know, you can kind of get it back. If you make one mistake in gymnastics, you're gone, right? How's, how, do you, how do you deal with that? You know, like you said there, you feel so much pressure in a team event. How do you, how do you deal with that pressure? Like I say, you just got to enjoy it, don't you? Yeah. You, you know, like when, you, when you're enjoying yourself and you're in your element, you're, you're doing things at your best. And that's, that's the way I try and handle the situation, really. Yeah. I, I always you seem pretty chilled. To, yeah. You seem like you just kind of take it like it's another day. Definitely. I try and be, you know, I have a lot of banter with the lads, with the lads and yeah. just take it in our stride, you know, because these are moments that you aren't going to get forever. So yeah. I try and make them count when I can. So you and your coach, Lee, have kind yeah. of mentioned, you've already mentioned it in this, in this podcast already, that, you know, you've got some really big goals. You, you already said you weren't quite satisfied with what you've got. You're hungry, you want more. What do you want to do? What are they? Well, obviously, I, I'm currently managing a shoulder yep. operation. So 
the the main focus right now is to get that healed and get myself physically fit for next year when obviously the Commonwealth Games are on and yeah. the Europeans, Worlds, etc. So I'd I'd love to be able to go out to the Commonwealths. You know, I'm from Birmingham as yeah, well, yeah. so that would be incredible. I'd love yeah. to manage to do that. And then obviously moving forwards in the cycle, hopefully my difficulty in the routines will get more and more. Crazier well, things. <laughs> crazier things will happen. That's the plan. And yeah, just show the world that we we really can challenge for these kind of medals. And yeah. I believe it. I truly believe it. And I'll, I'll give my all. And whether it happens or not, I'll, I'll always know I've given my all. So we'll talk about the Commonwealth Games in in a little bit. But like you've just mentioned there, you know, you've got some really big goals. You know, obviously Paris is three years away. You know, obviously it's a short cycle, unusual, but still there's one out there. How do you get through the kind of day to day of I don't want to say boring, but it's like you're almost waiting to get there. How yeah. do you kind of tick through day by day, week by week, get into that big goal? Like you said, I, t I take it day by day rather yeah. than our oh, Paris is three years away. Yeah. Um, I find it easier because, you know, when, you, when you're thinking about, oh, I've got three years to, to do blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You're kind of looking in the distance rather than the present and now. Yeah. So when I come in here and I know it's going to be a struggle, as we would call it, the struggle bus. Yeah, yeah. I'll hop aboard and, <laughs> you know, I'll, yeah. get, I'll get going because I know they will as well. Yeah. And I feel like I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones that has such a team in my, in my gym yeah. that will push each other. And when it's hard, I have got them and they've got me. Yeah, that's cool. Do you, do you think about, you know, that big goal regularly or, you know, because a lot of people like to, you know, take it day by day. I'm just dealing with what's today. But do you ever, is it in your mind all the time? Are you one of those people that's it's in there and it's like you never take your eye off it? Of course, like it's always there. Yeah. It's always there. You're always thinking about it. But I, I still try and, you know, stay present and yeah. in the now and giving that all every single day of the week so that I don't lose focus of that goal. Um, and that kind of tends to help. So you've mentioned shoulder operation. Yeah. So as an athlete, you push every day. You know, you push your body to limit, you know, you push your mind to limit as well. Do you know when it's time to have a rest or back off or anything like that? Um, I like to think so. And obviously my coach has been in the game a very long time as well. So yeah. he can see when I'm tired and when I need to push on or when I need to take a step back. So, you know, we work together on it. It's yeah. not just uh, he tells me or I tell him. Yeah, we just work together and get the best out of each other like that. You've, you've mentioned a few times you're like quite chilled in terms mm. of, you know, day by day, just turn up, enjoy it, give your best, kind of go home. Yeah. How, like, do you feel that pressure? You know, when you're like, right, I'm two months out of World Championships, I'm now starting to feel like I might have an injury. Does the, is, do you then start to be like, right, okay, I'm, I'm panicking, there's, there's a worry, anything like that? Yeah, the, the, the closer the, the competitions get, yeah. the more I'd start to stress. Yeah, um, so is that, is that just in general or was that just with the shoulder? Um, in general, really, like, I don't, I don't tend to stress okay. about like, oh, I need to be ready at seven o'clock, yeah, things yeah. like this. But <laughs> yeah. when, it, when it comes to like, um, like the shoulder, for example, I'm thinking, mm. okay, it needs to start, I need to start doing Getting some there. things now because I've yeah. got six weeks okay. and I need to be at my top, top of my game, so. Were you going into that World Championships with that in mind, as in you wanted to come away as a world champion? Um, I wasn't actually. I was going in there with the mindset of, I've got a PY routine that can make the final. Yeah. And once you're in the final, anything can happen. Everyone yeah. knows that. So yeah, it was a case of perform a routine that I know I could and get into the final. And then once I was in the final, give my all. Yeah. And that's what I felt like I did. So walking away world champion was just icing on the cake, really. Was there a moment through the routine or in the build up to that routine that you were like, this is, it's on, it's me? No, really? honestly, with P bars, it's so tight margins between okay. like first and 10th. Yeah. So the only thing that I had in my head was you need to stick the dismount, you need to stick the dismount because everything else, like it's yeah. going to be very close. Okay. <laughs> so did you feel like, so was that what did it then? Was it from, the dismount was so clean or? No, so from the beginning of the routine, all I was thinking was stick the dismount, stick the dismount, stick the dismount. So I don't even really remember what I was doing throughout. Yeah. And then I didn't stick the dismount. So okay. as, as soon as I finished, I thought, oh, you've, you've had a mare. You've had a mare <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. But then the score came in and I was like, oh, okay. Oh, really? That's pretty good, yeah. 
Okay. So then it kind of said to me, like, the rest of it must have been pretty good if I could afford to have a step yeah. and still walk away world champion. So, so when, you, when you, you, know, you got your score, yeah. did you know at that moment, you, I, like, I'm not quite sure how the, the scoring works, so yeah. you get them in their own order? Yeah, so it was, I was fourth up, so there was four people after me. So yeah. I, I knew I'd, I was coming top four, top, okay. top five. Yeah. Um, and I, I knew I knew I had, to, I had to beat two more people before. No way, you could get the before medal. I was getting a medal. So oh, that no was nerve wracking. And my, how, how do you deal with that? Like, okay, that's another one. <laughs> yeah. That's another one. And it, is it that literally it? Do that's you literally, literally it. Like, every time someone gets a low score, you're just like, yeah, is like that it? yeah. So my oh, coach, man. he's um, a top level judge as well. Okay. So he would be watching the routines and oh. he'll turn around to me and say, that's going to be close. And then I'm getting more nervous, <laughs> thinking, oh, my days. No so, way. That's crazy. So is that what it's like at every competition then? Is he right next to you? He's like, yeah, you're OK there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and, crazy. And like they're on the, on the scoreboard, they might have a massive scoreboard and your score will be here and then they'll, they'll go, oh. Oh, really? Like that. They'll no make way. it, they'll <laughs> like make it like show. the crowd, like get no them yeah, go in a bit. Oh really? I thought we'd just pop up as like a you know score on it. It's like working out. Yeah, like. they, they literally like they'll go, they'll make a bar go up. Really? That's yeah. crazy. I, I didn't realise it was like that. So, what was that feeling like? You know, when it when you saw everyone was just kind of dropping in below you. When did you re was it right until the last person you were like? Very yeah. Really that time. Very nerve wracking. Um, all of the team came down, coaches and stuff. Yeah. What, to watch the last couple of guys go? Yeah, yeah, oh, really? yeah. And then once the score came in, they all threw me in the air and oh, stuff. Amazing. So, it was so did you? Good moment. Before the actual score came in, did you realise you'd won? I like to think I, I, I was winning after watching it. Yeah. Because he had an error in it. Oh, did he? So I was thinking, surely, no, <laughs> surely. <laughs> Must be. Me. But at the same time, I was like, this is surreal. Like I don't even know if this is actually happening. I'm like, when am I going to wake up? Kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, oh, it was amazing. it was an amazing feeling, yeah. So when you've gone to like a high like that, you know, you've you've won your first world championships. You're still so young, you know, the day to day kind of, you know, pressure and training. You know, you really put your body through it. We've talked about like the physical signs of things, but do you ever get to that point where you're like, you know, from a mental perspective, you're like, I just need a rest, I need a break. Do you ever get to that? Because you see, you show me someone who's like, yeah. I just want it every day, every day. <laughs> yeah. But do you get to that point where you're like? I just need need that bit of time or not? No, definitely, yeah. definitely. Like after Tokyo, particularly. Yeah. Um, my one of my friends, Niall Wilson. Yeah. He speak. He spoke to me a lot about this the the Olympic come down. Yeah. And obviously, like you say, I'm I'm one of those guys that just loves being in yeah, the gym, yeah. loves doing what I can. Um, so when I came back from Tokyo, it was quite strange. Like yeah. I did, I found it quite strange because. We came back and it was st the games were still going on. Yeah, you couldn't stay there and enjoy yeah. the experience, kind of thing. Yeah, so I was, I was finding it quite strange because, like, I you like I don't know, I keep saying it, but you work your whole yeah. life, and then it's like, have I actually done the Olympics? Like, I, yeah. I, I didn't really understand that I had. Yeah. And it was, ho I found it weird to process that I was an Olympian now. Yeah. Because I, I still wanted to be an Olympian. If, yeah. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't quite understand that I had, I'd gone. Yeah. Um, so I found that a bit up and down, like some days I'd feel amazing, some days I'd be a bit down. Do you think if you'd come back with the result you'd wanted, do you think that would have made it an easier experience with the come down or do you think it would have been even harder because you were like, you have gone such a big high yeah. to then come back down again? Yeah, I, d I don't think it would have made it any easier to be yeah. honest. Um, and it's weird because I can't really, I find it hard to actually explain yeah, what, yeah. I'm, what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, yeah. But yeah, I definitely found myself going like up and down with emotions and stuff and mentality. So would you say this is the first time post Olympics that you're like, right, I need a rest? Is this the first time you've ever been in that place where you're like, like you said, yeah. like you need, need a rest? Is this the first time you've experienced that? Definitely, oh, really? definitely. Um, like I, I, always, I also love watching the sport and yeah. I found it hard to watch the competitions back. Yeah. Not just, not because of results, but just, I don't know. I just found it hard to watch them back, and it was. I found it so strange because I love gymnastics. Yeah. It's my favourite sport, of course. But so now you're like a month after it. Are you? Are you hungry now again? Definitely, yeah. definitely. And I, like I say, having these guys training for the world championships, it makes me want to be part of that team again and give yeah. my all for them. And so recovering from the shoulder up, you. We talked about it before we actually started filming but you knew you had this injury, like you said, just before the World Championships in 2019. You persevered with an injury for pretty much two years, like you said, injections to just kind of subdue the pain. Yeah. 
what's what's that experience been like because that's i don't know anyone else who's kind of done that do you know what i mean yeah so it was it was a challenge for sure yeah. um timing timings of you know injections and things and making yeah. sure that everything was safe um for my own health for the future because i've always said to the the doctors and stuff i want to be able to throw my kid in the air when i'm older yeah, yeah. um so we we made sure we did we did we did our best to make sure that i was as safe as possible um so was that yeah. a, did you have to weigh up those options was there a risk of by you know just kind of subduing the pain and pushing on was there a risk that that you know there could be a long-term effect or not um well it was something that we we always considered and we did our best to make sure we we minimized the risks of course and having having mri scans when i needed to and every few months checking in with the physio and my grip strength and just keeping the shoulder as strong as I physically could yeah. was really like helping the situation as much as I could. I was giving my all to make sure that I was in the best shape so that it was in the healthiest position it could be. Yeah. Um, and obviously like once we come back from Tokyo, 12 months from um, the Commonwealth Games, we knew it's the perfect time to actually yeah. get it sorted. So yeah, we just bit the bullet and did went it. and did it. Same for my teammate. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned the Commonwealth Games there. We're in Birmingham now. You are a lad from Birmingham. That must be exciting for you. You know, it's not just the home games in your nation. It's in yeah. your city. How do you feel about it? Are you excited? Very, very much so. Yeah. Very motivated. M motivated. And you know, it's not often my friends, family, and yeah. teammates can go to competitions and actually see me compete. Yeah. So like. You know, you're you're in school missing weeks and weeks and weeks out for yeah. training days and competitions. And then everyone's thinking, what is he actually doing? <laughs> but yeah. at least now they'll actually see what I've been training for and what I've been what I've been doing all those years. So, you know, Birmingham's a city with so much culture. Mm. You know, it's you know, people have loads of different, you know, opinions on it, but I'm sure, you know, you, <laughs> you mentioned you you know, you love it here. How do you think the city's kinda of shaped you, you know? You can tell everyone watching this from the accent, you know, you're a Birmingham lad. <laughs> How would you say that the city's kind of shaped you to the guy you are today? Well, personally, it's it's been great. I've I've loved I've always loved living in Birmingham. Yeah, you trained here forever, haven't you? Yeah, literally. So, you know, I de definitely wouldn't be the person I am without you know some of the experiences I've ha I've had here. Yeah. And in Birmingham, and for me personally, I've I've loved every second. What's it like? You know, all the way around this building that we're in now. There's so much history in terms of I think. There's a photo of you out there winning <laughs> UK school games when you're uh, 12, 12 13. Like yeah. What is it like to have growing up, you know, same coach, same environment? What's it like to know, you know, look back every day you walk in, be like, you know, that, that little kid is now an Olympian, a world champion at still only, you know, 22 years old. That must be crazy. No, yeah, it is. And I say like I was disappointed, I was slightly disappointed with the games yeah. in my own performance, but I know that little kid that yeah. was on that on that podium um, at the UK school games would have been over the moon. Yeah. So I should look re I should reflect on that and you know take the time to actually be proud of myself as well. I think that's that's crazy isn't it? You know when you're so young in sport, you know you have a big dream, you have a goal. That's what it is. It's a dream isn't it when mm -hmm. when you're young in sport and then often you get to a dream or you accomplish something and then in that moment you're like well it's not really enough because you know you didn't get what you wanted or you know you didn't quite you know you might have won world championships but you didn't land your dismount it's yeah like, you're always like oh there could be that bit more but i think it's you know it's good that you can kind of have that maturity again to look back and be like that's a kid's dream that's, that's yeah. then being accomplished definitely it's all about perspective isn't it yeah and the way you look at things because I, I like i say i know that that 12 13 year old yeah would have been over the moon with some of the things i've been able to do over the last five ten years yeah so yeah i, I should really make sure that i take the time and appreciate Enjoy that it. yeah so as we mentioned, Commonwealth Games are here next year. You've already mentioned, you know, it's important for you to kind of show that it's important to enjoy the sport. And I'm sure you're inspiring, you know, you definitely are so many people already, you know, young gymnasts and stuff like that. Do you ever think about the kind of legacy you want to leave behind or not even leave behind, but you know, as you move through the next five, 10 years of your career, what kind of message you want to give out to young gymnasts, I guess? Definitely, I, I, I love the idea of getting more more young gymnasts in, in the sport and letting them know like if you work hard you can achieve great things yeah um it's not going to be easy mm -hmm. but if you're dedicated and you give your all to something you really can achieve what you want to achieve yeah 
because as a young kid I've all, I always loved the sport and if, if you love it you'll give your all to it I feel yeah so I, I'm trying to make other kids enjoy it as much as I do and yeah see how much fun that they can have here because there's so many transferable skills you get from gymnastics for, for other life. sports as well and life yeah so you've mentioned that you know sport is not an easy journey like there'll be challenges it's not gonna be you know it's not easy work you know you turn up here every day train for six eight hours and you know it's really taxing what's your biggest challenge you've been through um i would say my ankle injury okay in 2018 um, just because at the time I was re I was really like going up upwards yeah. and progressing in in my my skills and my mentality, so it was quite a shock to actually like I I dislocated my ankle in January. Yeah. Um. So that meant I couldn't trial for the Commonwealth Games. Okay. And is that the was, only major you've missed due to injury? Yeah. Okay. So that was quite a big blow then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was it was quite disappointing at the time and. It's weird because n now being injured and not going to the world, yeah. my mentality is a bit different. I'm motivated and want them want to push on so that I can be in that team. Yeah. Whereas back then I, I struggled. I found it hard to see the the guys pushing and going for going for the Commonwealth Games when I wanted to yeah. be a part of that as well. Okay. So the the first few weeks when I was like in, in crutches and couldn't walk, yeah. it was it was really hard. But then after a few weeks, I started to push on and I believed I could get back for the Euro. So I kind of changed my, my end goal, Yeah, which helped. That's, that's cool. That's quite a, you must have been, what, 19 now? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, quite a, a crazy perspective of someone, you know, I think most 19 year olds, if they've you know, that, done that kind of thing or, you know, been for an experience where they had to miss a major, they'd be, you know, be really upset. But to be able to just go, right, okay, you've had that bit of time where, you know, you're disappointed, you've let yourself kind of get used to what's going on and then change your perspective. That's quite, that's quite a mature thing to do. Yeah, I, I feel like I, having like my coach and my teammates there as well, Yeah. it made it easier because, you know, as much as I was disappointed, so was my coach and yeah. he, he, went, he wanted me to be back safely and as quickly as possible, mm. which also helped. And you, you find small victories, don't you, where you, you do your first walk or yeah, yeah. your first jump on a trampoline yeah. and things like that you need to wall is an extra centimeter or something like that so i was finding the small victories and that's what i've been doing with the shoulder as well yeah. so i could do my first handstand walking last week yeah which is great <laughs> <laughs> and i know like on a normal day i wouldn't think twice about handstand walking like mm. that would just be something i did for fun yeah yeah um so it's, it's just finding those small victories isn't it You've talked a lot about your relationship with your coach. Yeah. We've mentioned, you know, you've been with him forever. How can you kind of take us through that relationship? What's it like? It's great. Uh, <laughs> personally, think it's great. Yeah. Uh, would he I'm say sure, the same thing? I'm sure he would say <laughs> otherwise, but uh, we've had good fun over the years. Um, he's been with me since 2008. Wow. Um, and he said, like, I was just a little kid that kind of enjoyed the sport, and he could see that I was I was willing to work hard. Yeah. Uh, do you clash at all? Do you have any big fallouts? Very, very, very rarely. Who's fault um, are they when they happen? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we have a lot of fun and he's always made sure I, I make sure that I have fun in the sport because yeah. when you're having fun, you're willing to put the work in. Yeah, and for sure. That's the way it's always been. And yeah, hopefully for the foreseeable future, we, we keep having fun and yeah. I'm sure we will. You know, we always have done, so I don't see why not. So if we look forward now to the World Championships uh, next year, you're quite fortunate you've got two home championships. It's not in Birmingham again, but in England. Going in as a world champion already, does that change your mentality? Do you go in as more of a favourite, you know, walking, you know, shoulders up a little bit more? or Do you like that underdog feeling? I've always liked being, being an underdog and going in with the mentality I I just need to deliver a routine yeah because I know if I deliver a routine the success the medals and the finals will come off the back of that yeah so as long as I I do what I know I can do everything else will take care of itself yeah. and that's the way I'll approach it that's awesome well it's, it's been amazing chatting to you you know we look forward to you know seeing you hopefully in the in the Commonwealth Games winning some medals for your, for your city um, next year but it's been great chatting to you thanks for coming on no thanks for having me